The last day of evidence in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial could be summarized as objection, rejection, and confession through projection. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winnie the Westie who's nibbling on my earlobe again. And for those of you who did not catch the last day of evidence in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, for those of you who don't have eight hours a day to watch this in real time, I'm going to summarize the essence of what happened yesterday, November 11th, 2021, and it can be summarized as objection, rejection, and confession through projection. Now, the first scandal of the day is that it was November 11, Veterans Day, and the first thing the judge did in the morning was take the time to ask if there were any veterans in the audience and when only one person raised their hand the judge asked for a round of applause for the veteran that veteran happened to be the defense's expert witness dr black and virtually immediately you had people taking to social media to claim that the judge is grotesquely biased that this reveals the fact that he should not be sitting in this trial and you had people actually saying that this judge suffered from and i'm quoting untethered bias and unprofessionalism and lo and behold, the individual who is accusing the judge of, quote, untethered bias and unprofessionalism in his Twitter bio has hashtag resist and hashtag vote blue in his bio. But that is not the example of confession through projection that I want to get at, but I don't want to get to there first. I want to start with the objections. The first thing that happened in the day was the prosecution objecting to the defense expert witness, Dr. Black. And for those of you who haven't seen Dr. Black, he is the perfect mix between John Durham and John Bernthal. Dr. Black was there to attest to the time frames of the video, the duration of the events depicted in the various videos. And for whatever the reason, the prosecution did not want the expert witness for the defense testifying as to the duration of the event in its entirety, that being from the friendly, friendly, the first event, to Kyle Rittenhouse attempting to surrender to the police, the final event. For reasons we can easily deduce, the prosecution did not want Dr. Black testifying that the entire sequence of events, the entire situation itself, took less than three minutes to unfold. The prosecution, in all their good faith and pursuit of justice, were prepared to allow Dr. Black to testify as to the duration of events on an individual basis, that being in between gunshots, but they did not want him testifying to the duration of the incident as a whole. What's being uh, pursued by the state at this point is timing sequence for the time between the friendly, friendly, friendly and the surrender to the police, which he says is yeah. a total of 400 and some, or attempted surrender to the police, which he says is a total of four minutes and some seconds. Two, uh, no, all two of which is, uh, every second seconds. of which I think has been analyzed here in this courtroom. Yep. 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 Um, by that you. was certainly my vision at the time we discussed all this, whether it was uh, each part was specifically discussed in his preliminary report or not. That was my vision of what we were going to be hearing. And I guess the questions I have is what is the prejudice to the state? Thank you. Are you suggesting that what he's about That's to That's a legal bias question. To, is going to mislead the jury. And we have a question. Is, mislead the jury by showing them the different facts. with respect to the new periods of time than it is with respect to the particular periods that you identified in the order that you drafted? Your Honor, I carefully or tried to manipulate the jury. Whether, <laughs> That's why it's prejudicial. It's devastating to my case. <laughs> the prosecution objected and the judge rightly in my humble opinion said no I want to know the duration of the events as a whole so even when I rendered my court order a little earlier on in this trial it was with the understanding that the expert witness was going to break down the time frame as a whole and not just on individual specific snapshots of the event as a whole the next witness of the day was Drew Hernandez who describes himself as a political commentator and a journalist and his testimony in chief was pretty good although the prosecution did score some points in cross because it looked like Drew Hernandez was a little too eager to keep repeating the point that there were rioters out there, Antifa members out there. It looked like Drew Hernandez was trying to prove a point with his testimony as opposed to just testifying on the facts. And when the late motif becomes a little too repetitive, it could tend to rub people the wrong way. It could tend to look rehearsed. It could tend to look like he is up there to prove a point and not just relate the facts. And the other point that the prosecution might have scored with Drew Hernandez is that immediately after the events as they occurred, Drew Hernandez took to Twitter and said that there was an armed individual involved in a shooting who was protecting property and the prosecution wants to bring up the fact that you cannot use deadly force to protect property. 
So to the extent that Drew Hernandez said that Kyle Rittenhouse was using deadly force to protect property, that would undermine Kyle Rittenhouse's privilege of self-defense, but Drew Hernandez was pretty clear in specifying that that was his apparent perception of the events and not actual reality necessarily. You say you're a journalist and a reporter? Yes. Earlier, you identified yourself as a pro professional commentator. All the above. Correct. Is it your practice as a journalist to interject your personal opinion into the stories you're re reporting on? It's the name of commentator. No. But you did that here. Where? On August 25th, a few minutes after oh, these shootings, you posted on Twitter your opinion as to Every, whether the every defendant journalist in your mind was right or wrong yeah. regarding what he did, correct? No, I said apparently yeah. at but the that beginning of that trying statement. To trip him up. See, that's why what effect does that have? With it. it means apparently. It doesn't mean <laughs> I that, do that like this is 100% yeah, I like that my opinion. You had already jumped to a conclusion, an apparent conclusion at that moment, right? That's what apparently means. But oh. that's not what journalists uh, do, right? Oh, 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 oh. where we're headed here. So other than some stylistic points that the prosecution might have scored with Drew Hernandez's testimony, I think his testimony was pretty clear that what was going on that night was an evening of lawlessness. It was an evening of lawlessness filled with rioters and arsonists, and I do tend to think that in the eyes of a reasonably objective jury that will fit well into the defense of Kyle Rittenhouse, that being self-defense, that being that he feared for his life, given all of the video evidence that we saw during this trial, which brings us to our last element of the day, the video evidence that the prosecution wants to bring in to say what they want to say it says. That doesn't make sense. There was a lengthy debate on the admissibility of zoomed in and enhanced aerial footage of the events and Binger wrongly asserted to the judge that zooming in and enhancing a digital video does nothing more than apply a magnifying glass to that video. You are just making the words on the page bigger. You're not adding letters and that turns out to be absolutely false. In fact, when you zoom in and enhance on a video, you are using some sort of algorithmic application which creates pixels that were not otherwise there based on guessing of the surrounding pixels to know which pixels to insert so you are actually modifying the image you are not just enhancing the image and despite Binger's prior affirmations to the judge that enhancing is doing nothing more than applying a magnifying glass to words on a page the prosecution's own expert came in to say that this is not the case and that they don't actually understand how it works beyond the application the bicubic algorithm is taking those pixels and resampling or he I'm literally sorry, is, pulled this off Wikipedia those pixels into uh, another area. Beyond that, I uh, cannot say. Do you know based on Can't your say. Bad expert answer. Yeah. What an expert. The bicubic algorithm makes these pixels. I do not know. The underlying issue here is that if the enhancement were only to establish a neutral or agreed upon fact that, you know, someone was at a certain location at a certain time, there would not have been this debate. But the prosecution wants to bring in this enhanced image, not to show that Kyle Rittenhouse was somewhere at a given time, but they want to show what he was doing at that specific frame of that enhanced image, and they want to use it to show that Kyle Rittenhouse pointed his gun at Rosenbaum first. They wanted to bring in this grainy, unintelligible image to show that Kyle Rittenhouse pointed his gun first, and that is why the objection was so important. What the f are what we is doing this? here? What, what? What? This is exhibit 155. All of us lean in. That's the enhanced? Yes. You can't Still see anything from that. Still dog shit. Now we'll please exhibit 156. What the hell are we looking at? This looks like a car accident. Oh, this is, this is the shooting of Rosenbaum, maybe? This is maybe? the frame averaging picture that he was talking about where they actually merged two frames that were separate into one. Which I mean, they didn't even hit on that, but you're you're literally yeah. having a computer guess at what should have happened between two moments in time. Oh, that's all. Thank you. These might as well be Rorschachs. What the Folks, the evidence is like closed, and ultimately the enhanced image was allowed. But look at the image yourself and see if you can possibly decipher what is going on in that image. And to finish with what is my favorite theme for all of this, and everyone who has been watching me for any extended period of time knows what that is, confession through projection. At one point, Binger, when he was examining Drew Hernandez, started asking Drew Hernandez about his politics. There was an objection, and the judge said, well, this isn't really a political trial, at which point Binger made a gesture with his head to confirm that, yes, this is indeed a political trial. No. Uh, does real America's voice have any sort of um, political... Political meaning. Uh, bias or agenda or anything like that and it goes Relevant. to the bias yeah. of the witness he, was, he wasn't working for them at the time. Uh, 
I in what respect? I, I assume that people. Are, <laughs> did we just admit uh, this is a left first right yeah, issue? Is not a political trial. And um, Binger just admitted it. He just, he just said it's a, a political um, trial. <laughs> a he did. Person's the prosecution has not exactly been great at hiding their emotions, as with the freeze frame heard round the world. And here you have Binger in one of his rare moments of actual honesty when the judge says, This is not a political trial. Binger shakes his head and says, No, Your Honor, this is, in fact, a political trial. This is a political trial brought by the prosecution against Kyle Rittenhouse. At every step of the way, you have seen confession through projection through Binger from his accusations of the defense of taking things out of context, of not following court orders, and his accusation of Drew Hernandez of being politically motivated and then nodding his head when the judge says, This is not a political trial. Binger knows darn well. This has always been a political trial from his perspective. Anyhow, that was the last day of actual evidence in the Rittenhouse trial. Today is going to be some motions. There are going to be jury instructions. We're going to see if the judge grants the motion to dismiss with prejudice. To be continued, and I will be there to give you the update. But at the very least, now you know what happened on the last day of trial. When evidence was adduced, the defense has now formally rested its case, and the rest lies in the hands of the judge and the jury. To be continued, and I will be there to bring it to you when it happens. But if you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment in the comment section below, because it feeds the algorithm. Alrighty then. If you want to support the channel, all of the support links are in the pinned comment. Robert Barnes and I will be discussing this during our next live stream. We do live streams with a guest every Wednesday called The Sidebar. If you want to find us and support us on Locals, you can find us at BeavaBarnesLaw.Locals.com All of my content is also on Rumble, so you can catch it there. But more important than anything, take care of yourselves. Check in on friends and family. Make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Booyah!